It was uh, meant to be also a weekend cart I can take to the track. It's never been, uh, the goal was never to be a fully dedicated track car because I want to be able to drive it to the track, drive it back, drive it to meets if I want to go to meets or go to the Togue. But never something that I just trailer to the track or, you know, just mm -hmm. on the trailer queen. Um, and I think it's getting there. I mean, I still got some work to do. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Motor Miami. Today we have Sylvester. Sylvester, thank you so much for making the time for us, man. So tell us, what do you drive? I drive a 1987 Honda CRX SI. 1987? Mm -hmm. So walk us back, man. I mean, it's not usual that a youngster like you goes and gets a 1987. <laughs> yeah. Where did this whole love for modifying cars start for you? <sighs> Probably when I was 17, I got my first car. I had a couple of friends who were into cars at that time. And they got me into like auto class in high school. Ooh. So I was like, yeah, I'll take auto class. I got my first car and uh, I started modifying that. I did like an intake, an exhaust, the sway bar. What was your first car? Uh, it's a 2012 Civic Si. So, oh, so you started with a newer car. Yeah, I still okay. have that car. Um, okay. My dad originally got it for me in high school. So I, that was my first car. I started out with that. I didn't really modify it much other than the exhaust and intake mm -hmm. and the sway bar. And um, from there, I ended up, you know, working at a shop. And so I just, my car, my love for cars basically grew. Mm -hmm. And then that summer from senior year, going into college, I started uh, looking for a project car. And I had like 800 bucks. So I was like, you know what, I'll find a cheap okay. Honda. I'll see what I can get on a uh, Craigslist. And I found not this one, but a different first gen CRX. And that thing was a beater. I went all the way to Ventura and I picked it up, but um, I didn't know anything about cars back then. I just knew how to do oil changes and brakes. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up because it was cheap. But when I brought it home and I started looking up um, like issues, like common issues with the car, how mm -hmm. to fix things, I went to do the brakes and I realized that the jacking points were rusted out. So I nice. couldn't even jack it up. <laughs> nice. So I was like, fuck, I was like, what am I gonna do? I was like, whatever, I'll fix it. But like I slowly realized like, you know, this, this, this car is going to get parted out. Like there's no saving it because it's completely rusted in all the common areas for these cars. So I ended up parting that out. I made like 2000 bucks and then I went out. Wait, and, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so you picked it up for probably like 800 or less and you made two grand out of it. Yeah, because uh, the body panels were intact and a lot of people look for these body panels because they tend to crack. So I sold all those body panels. I sold whatever I f could find, like the seats, the wheels. I had the OEM wheels and just people hit me up and that thing went uh, quick. So eventually I went to find another one and, and I was looking for a second gen because I wasn't a fan of the first gen originally. I just got it because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. But then I found this one, it was semi-clean and um, I just went to p look at it. I liked it, picked it up and, you know, just went from there. So. Tell us a little about the story of the car because you, you share with me some pretty cool stuff, which was <laughs> You're the fourth owner, right? I believe so. I'm not totally sure. Okay from what I know But you were somehow able to track the original owner. Yeah, his name was in the owner's manual mm -hmm. on the original owner's manual that came with the car The dude uh, had a unique name. So he's the only guy who popped up on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> So, and, But the weird thing is he was in Egypt. So I was like fuck it to be this guy so I was like, whatever, I'll message him. I messaged him and he came back and messaged me. And he said, yeah, that's his car. Like I sent that's him some pictures. That's a trip, dude. And he was like, yeah, I got that when I was in college here in California. He was like, uh, he got it without the AC option. So it has all the AC delete parts. Uh, that's all he could afford at the time. But that's basically it. That's how it started with this car. And then he wow. sold it to some lady. And I don't know where it went from there, but I got it from some guy in Alhambra. Um, that's basically it. <laughs> with That's the so cool. Of the car. Nobody knows where the car first starts. And the fact that you were able to at least get some info on that, it's yeah. so freaking rad, man. So you pick it up. It's probably like your second, right? Your second first gen? Yeah, second first cool. gen. Cool. So now you have a little more experience. Like you're like, yeah. okay, cool. I'm sure when you want to check it out, you're like, okay, yeah. jacking points, not rusted. Okay, it's already better than my old yeah. car. <laughs> so what was the vision for when you pick it up? Mm, kind of a restoration, kind of where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. 
It was uh, meant to be also a weekend cart I can take to the track. It's never been, uh, the goal was never to be a fully dedicated track car because I want to be able to drive it to the track, drive it back, drive it to meets if I want to go to meets or go to the Togue. But never something that I just trailer to the track or, you know, just mm -hmm. on the trailer queen. Um, and I think it's getting there. I mean, I still got some work to do, mm -hmm. but, you know, I've got suspension on it, wheels and tires, uh, motors completely stock. But you have tracked it. Yeah, I've taken it to a couple track days. How fun, how fun is it? It's a lot of fun in this. It's a little scary because it's a little bucket. <laughs> it weighs less than 2,000 pounds That's from awesome. factory. Um, half the battle for me is staying in my seat because I don't have bucket seats yet. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. So, but that's on the way. Add it to the list, add it to the list. Yeah, that's on the way. Same with the roll bar. Uh, ordered a roll bar as well. So, hopefully the next track day I have some bucket seats and a roll bar. <laughs> The front end, man. What do you got going on? Uh, the car has been resprayed. What color code or the name of the color? The OEM color is supposed to be Red Rio. I don't know if that's what the previous owner resprayed it to because he resprayed the car, but it was missing a couple body panels. And when I got the newer body panels, I just had it matched to the Red Rio or whatever he had resprayed it to. But um, the body itself is all stock, so it's not modified in any way. And we like that, by the way. <laughs> we like that. I like that. If you ever go yeah. and want to modify any car, pick up another first gen, do it to this. This one's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, OEM, right? Yeah. Any other crazy plans for it? For the front? Uh, no. I think just the stock look, other than the wheels. I like to keep it, uh, I guess, in a way, like a sleeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks stock. Nobody knows that has suspension on it unless like I told them about it or you looked for it. Mm -hmm. But other than the wheels, I just want to keep it stock. Nothing crazy. Wow, okay. That's awesome, man. How hard is it to find parts for these cars? Uh, it's pretty damn hard. There's, they're no longer at the junkyards. Back when I started, there was a couple uh, at the junkyards. I would go and pick up some parts. But now it's like nearly impossible. You got to go in the Facebook groups. Luckily, some people hoard uh, parts. <laughs> They'll have like a whole lucky garage full of parts. Lucky and unlucky because you have to pay an arm and a leg, yeah. Yeah, and I know a couple guys who don't actually post uh, their stash, mm -hmm. but you know. You can uh, reach them out. Yeah, yeah, I can reach out at them and they'll hook me up with a part <laughs> too. But for the body panels, Marcus at Heel Toe has uh, fiberglass panels, and I think right now they're carbon fiber. Whoa. So some of these panels are the his old fiberglass style ones. So that's uh, they're not all plastic, but the fenders and the header panel on my car are still the original plastic ones. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought they were metal, but no, they're plastic. No, yeah. Wow. They're, if you lean on them, they'll probably crack. Wow. <laughs> so that's probably why the car is so light too. It's under 2,000 pounds from factory. So it's probably all those little ABS plastic fenders mm -hmm. and those little things that they add. Yeah. Plus it's not even, you know, the, the rear seats are non-existent. So there's yeah. that. Yeah. So very, very light car, absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. SI model, which I'm sure 
it's very desire now yeah especially back uh when i was looking for it because the dx and hf models are carbureted so mm. oh, wow. so this okay. is the first fuel injected model i think that came out from honda here in the u.s with along with the honda civic si the, i think it was the third gen mm -hmm. uh so that's what i looked for i didn't know that oh, and that's okay. what i got because i couldn't do a carburetor it's even harder to get those running and i don't know anything about carburetors so fuel injected keep uh kept it simple gotcha mm -hmm. all right cool cool tell us about the suspension what do you got going on because i know they're tricky on these cars so front suspension these cars don't have any springs they have um torsion bars mm -hmm. and just front dampeners and on my car i got the tn medieval pro setup 24 millimeter bars on the front and just the tin dampeners on the front and on the rear it's a traditional coilover but it has a rear solid axle so the solid axle um is also weird because on these <laughs> on these cars weird. yeah on these cars they weren't traditional like locked solid axle they have a, they had an internal sway bar so it was technically semi-independent but on my car i took out the internal sway bar and i went ahead and locked it and put some uh, cheddar shims so now the rear is locked and it's a traditional uh, solid axle on the rear with mm -hmm. the coilovers from the TN. So that's what I got going on in suspension on this one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Any future upgrades, downgrades, you know, because you <laughs> haven't tried it with the, with the new uh, rear setup at the track. You haven't, but... No, I've only taken it to Adams. I haven't taken it to like Willow Springs or anything, but I do want to hit up Willow Springs and because that's the track i mostly go to mm -hmm. so i know like what it can do at that it's track. perfect for this car i mean yeah it's just one tomorrow. long straightaway but everything else is turns yeah so it's perfect for this car and i already have like a base time on that so i know if i go there with the locked rear uh, axle i kind of will feel like yeah this is better it's not right so then i'll go from there um depending what my lap times are you mentioned that most people go with that setup, but at the end of the day, is the way you drive and your driving style that also dictates yeah. what feels appropriate for you. Okay, yes. that's what's up, man. Now, was it? Did it have all the um, the little like details, or did you have to find like uh, plastic window covers, uh, <laughs> uh, mud flaps? I mean, so these mud flaps are the EDM style ones, so European. And what's the difference? If you don't mind sharing with me, <laughs> the only difference is uh, on the back. It has the white Honda lettering. That's oh, the only difference. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. But gotcha, I got gotcha. them new. Some guy was selling like a warehouse full of new old stock parts. Oh, that's and nice. And he still had them in the wrapping with the hardware. So I got that from him. Um, dude, uh, uh, the car was missing a lot of little trim. Like the, like this stuff right here was missing. Mm. Uh, on the rear wiper, it was missing like the little black cover. Like this lettering, I got this whole panel brand new too from that guy because mm. it was missing the red lettering. And I don't know if the red lettering is stock from the US. I don't know if that's just a, like a Japanese and mm. European uh, option. And then the SI badge was uh, kind of missing too. So I got a brand new one and I put it on there. Um, trim wise, the side molding too, like the door cap, this fender. I had one fender on the other side, but it was a regular DX one. And the regular base model ones aren't flared like this. They have a, they're just, non-flared oh, basically okay. so this okay. one has a little yeah, flare yeah, yeah. to it i wouldn't even notice until you okay so i kind of went to those little details trying to get it mm -hmm. to a uh, factory gotcha okay so it didn't look like this <laughs> no <laughs> just the paint was good <laughs> oh okay and then the the rear wing uh the rear wings oem but it's made out of like a rubber kind of mm. material i know you were looking at it earlier but if you squish it it cracks the paint <laughs> oh, okay. so it's a weird little wing. Supposedly Honda actually did a testing on it to see if it's aerodynamically good. And supposedly it was that made it like a more stable, I guess, in the higher speeds. What, 40 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's um, cool though, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's all that's going on in this car. Cool. Wheel and tire setup, what do you got going on? Uh, I got RPF ones, 15 by sevens, Enkis. Uh, got the Dunlop Derisa threes on here 205s by 50s i believe it should be on there let's see yeah 205 50 15s um, now you mentioned that's the that's the big, biggest tire setup you can rock on this car yeah with this offset that i have i don't remember if it's a 41 or 35 offset but luckily it hasn't eaten the front fenders because i know some people have the 205s mm. and depending on their offset their fenders will get chumped up when they're mm. tracking so, but yeah, 205s, you can't really go wider unless you're going with a 
wide body kit or maybe if you have stiffer suspension so mm -hmm. it doesn't go as low mm -hmm. and doesn't need through your fenders gotcha so any major bigger plans for the outside for the outside no i'd like how it is it's gonna stay like this we like it we like <laughs> it tell us about the interior man. what are we going on so the interior i had these seats reupholstered by another uh first gen community member up in bakersfield uh I had them do it with the black and the red stitching. It's beautiful. I thickened up the bolsters, so they're not supposed to be that thick, but I did that, so hopefully it held me in the mm -hmm. seats a little bit better, and it does. But not, enough. This, <laughs> not enough. At this point, I need bucket seats. But interior, I got the NRG steering wheel. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, but I ordered a Momo, the Mod 78. Nice. So that's what I'm going with next. The shifter knob, if you look in there, it's from a prelude around the same gen or same mm, era because okay, okay. the crx one had white lettering for the shifting numbers mm -hmm. and same with the cigarette lighter it's orange the little markings gotcha. so the, that's also from a prelude mm. so i kind of wanted to match the cluster gauge because the cluster gauge is orange on these cars oh yeah, yeah so yeah. i kind of look at it when i drive you know those little details little details yeah yeah but other than that i mean it's all stock plastics are, uh, are all stock on the rear I mean, I got the optional rear speakers, but I don't have the covers on right now. But mm. typically, I do. They do come with the optional um, covers, and that's what I have. But I just super hard to find now. Yeah, I just don't use them because I'm always adjusting like the rear suspension, try, play, uh, trying to play with it. Mm -hmm. So I just leave them off. Mm -hmm. It's easier instead of like taking them off yeah. every single time you got to do an adjustment. That <laughs> no, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, other than the steering wheel and bucket, what any other plans for you? You want to keep the whole interior of the carpet? Yeah, I'm gonna keep the whole interior. I'm not gonna strip it out. Uh, Good. I'm not gonna lose th that much weight from doing that. Maybe like 10 pounds if I do. It's already a pretty light as it is. Um, but yeah, keep it original as I can. About the beast <laughs> the beast let's talk about the beast what's all right the power plant on this car let it be k let it be k let it be k <laughs> so i got a whopping 79.9 wheel horsepower out of this engine i've had a dyno so, I've had a dyno here, like, <laughs> I'll show you guys numbers, don't think yeah, I'm lying. That's I actually <laughs> did have a dyno because I, I was going to community college taking some auto classes and they had a dyno at Saddleback College. And I took the car in because, you know, they're like, hey, bring your cars, mm -hmm. we'll teach you how to, like, you know, read the numbers, read the graphs, like, set up the car for a dyno. And I was like, screw it, I'll take, I'll take the car. <laughs> and, and I put down 79.9 wheel horsepower, but that was before the header, so I might be pushing 80 now. Yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> so, doing a And it was more. a hot day too, so we don't know. <laughs> hot day, yeah. 80, 80 horsepower, mm -hmm. 2,000 pounds. I'm sure it's, it's a joy to drive. So, what are we staring at, Sylvester? The uh, stock motor EW4 is what it's called. It's a 1.5 liter engine not much to look at it's just all original again mm -hmm. the goal with this car is to be all original i do have plans to go one day with a b swap okay so like what b16 or something not sure yet i wanted it to be carb legal so i don't run into issues mm -hmm. with like uh getting it reft Definitely. none of my buddies <laughs> have gotten problems with getting reft and stuff so i'd rather just keep it legal not run into any issues here mm -hmm. in california okay put too much money into the car to get it in sentimental value too on top of that yeah, yeah. so so stock engine you said 1.6 you have aftermarket header uh yeah they're the dc but it's actually the 1.5 not 1.6 oh 1.5 sorry sorry yeah. sorry 1.5 keep <laughs> i don't think we ever see anything below 1.6 okay 1.5 mm -hmm. any other upgrades i see you done the spark plugs uh no again everything's original that's original yeah the plugs? The spark plugs, well, the wires, if you're talking about the wires, they're just the NGK ones. They're I'm an idiot. I was talking about the wires. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I ran out of my, my wording. Spark plugs, yeah, 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 the wires, okay. 
Yeah. Have you have you been able to um, upgrade anything, or you just, this is completely original? Completely original. The only modifications on this car are the suspension. It's on TNs. Mm -hmm. If you can see over here, I got the uh, Cheta camber slash caster plates. Mm -hmm. So I have those adjustments up here. On the rear, you can't really see it because um, they, they're like installed, so it's covered by all the suspension parts. Mm -hmm. But I have his shims as well, mm -hmm. so you can adjust the toe and the camber. Oh, that's cool. So I got that on the rear. And then on the rear for the upgrades as well, I have aluminum drums from an Insight. So it's less than sprung weight for better handling. <laughs> Eric, right? Eric mentioned that. Yeah, I shout think he's running those too. Yeah, but, shout out to Eric. <laughs> it still trips me out, but yeah. that's a cool little upgrade, yeah. Yeah, they're I think like four, a whole four pounds lighter than the iron drums. That's a, that's, that's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are the future plans for this whopping 80 horsepower engine monster? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Until it blows, I'll go B-series until it blows yeah Shit. you're never gonna go be serious no dude it doesn't want to give out i've taken it to track days and it's like 200 miles from where i live one way and then back and no issues it burns barely any oil like maybe half a quart after the whole day <laughs> wow awesome so, little car dude doesn't have any leaks either so i've rebuilt the top end actually oh, okay so i've replaced the head gasket because i used to work at a shop and that week my boss left and he was closing the shop down because I was the only employee and he was the only guy there. So he's like, yeah, let's close the shop down while I go on vacation. And I asked him if I could use the shop to uh, do some work in my car. Mm -hmm. And in that week, I took off the head. I sent it out to get machined, <laughs> <laughs> did all the gaskets on the engine. Um, on the transmission, too, I replaced the seals and I did all this work. And it was the first time actually rebuilding an engine for me. So I was like, screw it. Let's see if I did it right. And it, it's held up. Uh, probably five years but wow. it's only 30,000 miles on those five years because I don't drive hard driven much. though hard driven yeah yeah the, track. So. the master cylinder it's out of a prelude I think it's the seven eights I forget which year it's out of but I have the receipt somewhere so <laughs> if I ever need to replace it I can get it so it's out of a prelude mm -hmm. so a bigger master cylinder the front brakes are out of an Integra oh, yeah. um, I think an 88 or 89 so oh, okay. again same era but the Integras just had bigger brakes mm -hmm. and they bolt on so I went with Integra brakes. I have the heel toe fast line stainless steel lines. Um, on the rear again, I got the inside drums and same with the line stainless mm -hmm. steel. But <laughs> again, there's just small upgrades from other cars. But day I mean, and night though, right? Yeah, it's a huge difference mm -hmm. at the track. It holds up. I don't have any uh, issues with locking up too bad, but I have locked it up a couple times. Mm. So it stops the car pretty good. It's on Porterfield pads on the front and on the rear it's on Porterfield shoes. So I'm not sure if you've heard of the RS4s, I think. They're uh, they're street compound. Mm -hmm. I might have uh, not worded that one correctly, but I think they're the RS4s. Okay. But yeah, that's what's going on the brakes. That's huge though for I mean, a, a light car like this, a momentum mm -hmm. car. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It mm. is on fully uh, set energy suspension bushings. Mm. And then a rear Adco sway bar on the rear. And I do have a weird uh, exhaust if you want to take a look at it. Tell us about the exhaust setup. So I'm going to need to replace the muffler, unfortunately. But when I got this muffler, it was a new old stock. Mm -hmm. I think I got it from Dwayne Bada. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his last name. But the guy at Vitega Club. Oh, okay, okay. Dwayne. They do the track days. So I saw him post something on Instagram. And then I hit him up about the muffler. And I guess he just had it in his garage for some reason. Uh, new old stock I bought it off of him but recently it broke so I had to get it fixed <laughs> oh. but I think it's time to change it out because just the fix I didn't like it aesthetically even though you can't see it mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like it okay but um, yeah that's so it. what is the plan for the exhaust system um, just change out the muffler maybe to some magna flow okay but again undecided a lot of undecided a lot stuff undecided. here as long yeah. as it keeps it on the road we're good mm-hmm all right, Sylvester, thank you so much, man, for making the time. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah. Definitely appreciate it. We absolutely love these little boxy cars. <laughs> um, goes to show you, I don't think any horsepower w will ever be as fun as this. No. Um, so thank you for showing that, man. Any shout outs? Huge shout out to Cameron Grady. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, too. <laughs> uh, Cameron Grady, I haven't actually met him in person, but you know, he's a guy I know on Facebook. He has this car, and he has a, two of them, I believe. And dude, I message him like 24 7. Any issues, he always helping me out. Same with Charles Lewis out in Vegas. Um, 
Shane at Elisa Viejo Auto Service. He's the one who fixed my ECU issue and he's fi fixed the motor mount issue I couldn't figure out. Uh, and then Doug for reupholstering my seats. And then just the whole Red Pepper Racing community. They've helped me out a lot on uh, figuring out issues whenever I've had issues on this car. The Red Pepper? Red Pepper Racing. Is that what first gen uh, CRX is? Yeah. No, that's the name of the forum for the okay. first gen. Oh, a little okay. sticker in the back. So th back when there was forums, <laughs> Sadly. that was the name of the forums and, uh, you know, just the, just the name. That's dope though, man. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that there's that connection uh, from different parts of the country and the world based on a little, you know, Econo 80s little box here. So that's absolutely pretty cool, man. Well, like I said, man, thank you so much for reaching out. Yeah. Uh, I love what you're doing with the first gen. Um, the lack of aftermarket support definitely pushes people away from it. And it the fact that it's a little bit older, so you are going to get more rust, more, you know, things mm -hmm. that you're going to have to worry about. But I love the fact that you're tracking it, you're driving it, and you restored it. And it's just pretty amazing, dude. Yeah, Good job. Thanks. Thank you for uh, giving it a little light on it for the community out there, the Honda community. I know a lot of people don't really know about it either. They always see it and they're like, oh, second gen. I'm like, no, it's the first gen. <laughs> <laughs> the better gen. Yeah. <laughs> Respect your elders. Yeah. Well, Sylvester, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Keep it on the road. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see you at meets and, and at the track, man. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, oh, man, yeah, already. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> can't wait until you mess up. Nah. I know, huh? Just edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> you call it in a quarter or something. Mm -hmm. All right. Three, two, one. It's awesome, man. Well, let's get in it. Okay. The front end. Um, Where are you going? Oh, let's sorry. get in. I'm going to open up the hood. <laughs> you watch the video. <laughs>